So we're building a castle from scratch. This is a medieval castle. This is a castle that never really existed, but it's the type of castle that might have existed in this area in the middle of the 13th century. But of course what we've also done is to create a project in which we use the techniques that we used six, seven, eight hundred years ago. But we're going to go in through the main gate. So the castle's main gate has been freed up this season because it's been under construction for the last, well, since 2017. And you can see the uh, tread wheel winch, which is mounted on the wall here. That was actually positioned in front of the main gate. So this is the first season that we've been able to go into the courtyard through the main gate. Now, I'm... I think what I'm going to do is take you inside this tower and I'm going to show you the lifting machinery which we use. So this is the uh, tread wheel winch. We're going to walk in these drums and as we walk this central axle is going to turn and that means that we can wind in this rope. So the rope goes up the central mast, around a pulley, up to the end of the jib, around a second pulley and down and then it's connected there to the cradle. We're going to hoist that load up onto the castle wall. Is it full? Yeah, it's full. Oh, okay, it's ready to go. One, two, three. Okay. This one, this one, this one, this one. Okay. Ça a décollé. Ça va? Yes, good job. So uh, the masons, they bring up about three metric tons of weight every day. Wow. We're building a castle, but of course saying that we're building a medieval castle doesn't mean anything because the med medieval period lasts for a thousand years. So you can imagine in a thousand years of human history, things change enormously. So the difference between a, a wooden fort being built around the year 500 and a stone fortress in 1500, obviously they're, they're worlds apart. Okay, so when we began this project we had to determine when we were building the castle. So we're interested in the 13th century, so the 1200s. And to be even more precise, we took one year as our start date. So when we began building, we said it was the year 1229. And each year we move forward in history. So here you're in the year 1253. Okay, stop. Uh, merci beaucoup. So you're selecting specific rocks? Uh, no, most of them, but we use those that they are like the less beautiful and the smallest one. So we recycle stone. Every stone have one place. So we're going to the quarry. If we chose this area, this specific area to build the castle, it's because this is where we find the largest deposit of sandstone in this area. So that meant that we knew we had enough stone to build the castle. So the stone that we find in this quarry is ferruginous sandstone. It's a compression of sand over millions of years and that produces a stone which is a sandstone but it's an iron stone. It's got a really high iron content. Here we're extracting the stone with some pretty uh, large tools. So uh, my job here, where the stone was extracted, I have to cut it to a different piece, to a different form. So to cut it, the stone, I make some hole. And here the hole, I'm going to use this coin, like this. And after I have to eat very hard this coin. Mm -hmm. And when it's in tension, there is a shock right on the stone. If I have a bigger stone, I have to use more hole. So here, in this stone, I'm going to make five hole. I already make three here. So my job is just to hit over here, like this. I follow the line and the stone cut it. So I have to play with all the coin. I can't hit the same coin over time because my shock 
are going to go the other side. So I make a right shock around the stone to cut it. And I repeat this job a lot of time. I use this, I put it here to protect my hole. And after I make this impression and I can already hit him with the big armor. So I use my ears. There is a different song, Pif Paf Poof. Pif is the sound the stone was very strong and I can cut it. Puff, we have a shock inside the stone, so it's going to, to sepper. And took, the stone was ready to sepper. So I have to use my ear, this is a game. If I have a lot of coin, it's very difficult to find the right place. Just for making tension. And here the difficulty is I have to eat in not a good way. It's better for a carrier man to eat in this axe. If I eat like this, my back takes some shock. So I have to go slowly to not brush myself. So I have the movement to just go like this for better eat. Soon after a year, I go another way and I continue my job around the stone. So this is my job. So after I have a port, I have to separate another time. I make some cube for the stone cutter or sometimes just from the mason. I just do some big stone, large stone or some stone like this. More right, more regular just for the floor. So this is work you've done over the past couple months? Yeah, for two years. Yeah. Three years here? Yeah. Every day? Yes, every day I eat stone. <laughs> and you've got a lot of muscle. I mean, you really... No, you, you see, I'm, I use more of my brain because it's not only muscle. If you use only muscle, you're going to break your toes and break your back. Ah. It's better to use brain, concentrate, ride the stone, hit on the same place, the good place, and after it's better for you and for all of us. And when they were building the original part of the castle, did they have more stonemasons because there's probably more need or no? Yes, for the beginning there are more people okay. work here. Okay. So it's better for a carrier man to be free because we have uh, someone who make this hole. Mm -hmm. So just one person is okay. But after you have to cut it another time and it's a job for two person with another tools. In the part of the castle, yeah. um, my job was over the, the entrance. This okay. is just me. Okay. But not all of us because the, shot, the castle was uh, 25 years old and I have 21, so <laughs> this is not possible. How much of the castle came out of this spot? Uh, from here, you have to go um, four or three meters up on my, on my head. And this is all of this hole right behind you for this castle. Hyper local. <laughs> yeah. What we've also done by accident, if you like, really over the last 25 years, is to create a project in which we are literally taking local materials and transforming them. So we're literally taking the, the materials from the quarry they're then quarried and either sent straight to the masons or to the, the stone masons lodge where, where they're given a specific geometric shape. We take oak from the forest to square up the beams which we need for the roof timbers, to make the, the bridges, the doors. We also have sand on site here on the floor. You can see the quarry sand which we find here. So this can be used in the mortar. We have clay in the forest floor, so that clay can then make root tiles, floor tiles, and of course, very important in any construction project, water. So we've got nearly all the materials we need, which is why this area was chosen. How common is that? Like, how common is it to find a place that has well, that many this is something that raw we, materials, right? This is something that we also ask ourselves. Obviously, this is the only castle we've ever built. But what we've been amazed at is how much this site provides us. Yes, we've got stone, yes, we've got wood, but we can also make 15 different colors just using the materials which we find here on site. And that's something we never expected. Obviously, there are materials that we buy in. For example, just here, 
we have the area where we make mortar. So the mortar that you can see prepared here on the boards, that's the glue which we use to bind the stones together and it's lime based. You can just see here a lime kiln under construction. Okay. Now the white stones which are going to be burnt during the lime burn, that's limestone. We haven't got that here in our quarry, we buy that in. But even in the Middle Ages, if you didn't have all the materials you needed, then obviously you buy that in from other quarries. So we'll burn those blocks of stone we'll then draw off all the water, all the CO2, because for 72 hours we'll bring that kiln up to, to 900 degrees Celsius and during the burn we'll then draw off all the water, all the CO2 and we will obtain quicklime. So quicklime has been deprived of water, it has one thing that it wants to do and that's absorb any water it comes into contact with. So when you plunge that into water, that's a process known as slaking, it produces heat and the rock transforms into a putty. And it's the lime putty which we've mixed up here with sand and water. It's a non-hydraulic lime which means it will dry very slowly, allowing all the stones in the castle to settle into position. So here there's a wall, something like this. Here we have the ancient level, so the middle, the middle and the middle, and it's really precise. So when I go here, when I go there, really simple, the Egyptians use it. Oh, and it's more precise than the level actual. Oh, the really? Than the modern level? Yeah, because the modern level have bubbles yeah. and two lines. Yeah. So it's less precise than just one line here. Wow. Here and here, it's the same. Oh, so, so it's level. Yeah, it's level. Okay. So I can make the floor really flat, flat. 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 So I can see where is going to be the inside of the wall. We can use that compass. So now I have to put more mortier over there. And this is a material which is being used more and more now in construction, in restoration work. This is the material, of course, which would have been used in the Middle Ages to build a castle like this. So here we're just working on the last little part of the surface and the tools always get smaller as we're working. So for instance, when we start off, we start with the shuts to take off the biggest amount of material. And then we can take off the bumps that are left behind with this tool, the brush. The masons give us uh, the stones which are cut very quickly. It gives us the possibility to build the wall fast. But at a certain point we use a line of realignment. So that the masons will build very quickly with rubble stone. It doesn't have a geometric form. They're working on the macro, the large scale. But when they're building these walls, at a certain point it helps to have a, a line of realignment aligned to realign the, the wall and the stones that we have cut they all have a slight curve on the front so that when we put them together it gives the circumference of a tower okay. so the blocks will start out like here we have a stone which is in its raw condition that is directly taken out of the quarry and then we start with a reference face so we'll use our set square to find the next face for our lines of realignment, we have three faces only. The face that is seen, the face where we pose the, the stone, and a face with the reference. All these stones are seven inches high, and it's the inch of Gedlong. In the Middle Ages, every lord has their own inch. The most basic finish, it's called broche, which is here. It looks pretty rough, but the benefit of this finish is that it's fast. And so we can build a line of realignment stone, which we have here. We can do it in half an hour. If we were to do the same stone with a, a layage, this tool here, it takes a lot more time. And so to, to arrive on this uh, finish, it's six steps instead of two. So it costs more of us. And so we use it in places such as the Lord's Chambers, the stones uh, which have a 
a nicer finish. The toilet. It just goes down straight wow. to the floor. So this is the castle courtyard itself. Obviously it's, it's not finished yet, but it's starting to feel quite complete. We've got the chapel tower here. That was finished in 2019. Uh, and in fact, because we got the roof on, we've started a whole program of mural paintings inside the castle. And these paintings, they're all produced using paints which we make on site. We've got the North Range. So this is the building which houses the castle's great hall. Uh, and then the Great Tower. The Great Tower isn't finished yet. So this is the finished castle. So the main gate is protected by two towers forming the gatehouse. We have the chapel tower, we have the roof line of the North Range, and this is the Great Tower. Now the Great Tower has just over two thirds of its final height. Today it's level with the roof line of the North Range. So there's still another 10 meters, another 30 feet at least before it's finished. How long will that take? Well, I think we've got about eight to 10 years roughly of, of building work still ahead of us. So it's gonna take 35 years more or less. We don't know exactly when the yeah. castle will be finished. 35 years to finish a castle is a really long time compared to medieval builders. Oh, really? Really long time. <laughs> uh, the reason that we're taking a lot longer is mainly because we spend a lot of time talking. We're here, of course, to explain our work. The techniques that we used six, seven, eight hundred years ago. And, and these, these memories aren't so old. That's the strange thing. We still have some visitors, yes. older visitors, who will remember, remember yes. the blacksmith in the village. You know, it's less and less, but, but it, it does exist. <laughs> Sometimes we're reviving almost forgotten techniques, but, but often then there's just a few generations away. C'est exactement comme au Moyen Âge et jusque jusque dans les années jusqu'à avant la dernière guerre. Dans les campagnes, on faisait les outils de cette manière-là. Il y avait un forgeron dans chaque village et c'est lui qui fabriquait les outils. L'extrémité le, a pris une couleur légèrement jaune, légèrement bronze. Ça signifie que le métal est devenu plus souple. Je suis arrivé ici, j'avais aucun intérêt pour la pierre, c'était pas mon truc. J'ai rencontré un maçon, il m'a donné l'amour des murs. Et la pointe est toujours en bon état. Toujours pointu. Qu'est-ce que vous pensez du chantier de Notre-Dame Parce qu'ils ont besoin de, de savoir comment on faisait avant. Oui. Le défi, ça va être de refaire comme les bâtisseurs du Moyen Âge. Ils sont venus apprendre à écarrir les bois. Il y a bien peu de personnes aujourd'hui qui savent utiliser la hache pour écarrir un morceau de bois. Ils sont venus apprendre ici. So this is where we prepare all the permanent wooden structures for the castle. And so the carpenters work in oak and they use green oak. So that means that the wood is freshly felled. You don't leave the wood to season. You fell the tree and then you work it rapidly because green oak is like working butter. It's really, it's easy to work. Whereas if you leave that to season, it's going to become just way too hard to, to use with uh, the hand tools that we have available to us. So we're working in green oak and we're working in heart of oak. So this is the center of the tree. So the carpenter's job is to identify the center at both extremities uh, of, the, of the, the, the piece of wood and then they'll link them up. You can see here uh, ochre and that's because a line here soaked in ochre has been stretched, we can see it here, has been stretched from one extremity to the other and then by pulling that taut and then snapping the line 
that gives you the line. So you've linked the centre of the tree at this end with the centre of the tree at the other end. And obviously no tree grows dead straight. So you're f always following the grain of the wood and that means that the, the, the piece of wood that you're going to produce will be mechanically really strong. Now the next job is to remove the bark and then the next stage is to cut notches into the wood. The tree would have been here and then using axes they've cut notches into the wood to this line each time so they don't want to go any deeper that's all the skill of using your axe to just cut to the line and then once they've got the notches all the way along they'll remove the wood between them so that's going to give us a, a rough surface to work on and then using a side axe or a, a broad axe they can then use that as a finishing tool you can see here the lines left by the tools they've been using and that will give us a really nice smooth finish so this is a side axe or a board axe you can see it actually has a slightly off center handle and it has just one cutting edge one beveled edge so that means it can be really used to get a nice flat finish to the to the beans Non, ça dit tue. Non. Au début, c'est un peu dur, mais après, ça va. It takes a while, and obviously, these guys, they're like athletes. Obviously, when you start out, uh, it's tiring for the muscles. But you know, these guys, they're, they're used to it. It's about also using the right amount of energy not wearing yourself out in the process. So that all the transport on site is done by four cart horses. All the different materials, stone, wood, clay. Obviously having cart horses means you need carts and if you have carts you need wheels. So we also have a wheel right on site who's just getting ready tomorrow to circle some wheels. Ah, I think you shoe, I think you shoe a wheel. This is the rim here, the metallic rim that's going to be applied to this wooden wheel. So the, basically a fire will be lit here on the ground and then they'll lift the rim. Uh, that will be then placed in the fire and heated. We've got lots of different tools here for transporting hot metal uh, and then that will be applied to the wooden wheel. The wooden wheel will be kept really wet and so as the hot metal touches the wood, the secret of course is to get it hot but not so hot that it burns. You can see the marks here where it will be hammered onto the actual wheel. Here we have the rope maker's hut. The ropes that we make here are made either from flax or from hemp. Now, we might say that we're using, building a medieval castle, but we are protected by modern health and safety rules, which means you will see anachronisms on site. You've probably spotted a few already. So we have steel toe cap shoes, uh, hard hats, uh, protective eyewear masks and the ropes that we make here we use on site for example around the workshops but the rope that you saw on the lifting machine earlier that's modern that has a known breaking strain because you can make very strong rope from plants but when you're using plants you can never test the breaking strain of that rope before you use it you can never be 100 percent sure it will hoist six seven eight hundred pounds so we take no chances all the ropes that you see on the lifting machine they're modern so we know so you haven't know. inherited the safety of the middle exactly right, right. we are not here to collect data on the accident rate of 13th century construction sites so and that's a good thing So over here is the, it's where you cook the bread, it's the cuisson de pain. Regarde, tu vois, tu prends ça comme ça, tu le mets comme ça, et tu mets tes mains, regarde. Oh, hey. <laughs> wow. Bonne journée. Ça, c'est du blé. Allez, on y va C'est plus facile, allez, vas-y. 
essaye de... Il y a des moments que ça bloque, tu accélères quand c'est facile et tu fous. Tu... Alors, It seems like everything moves at a very different pace here. I, well, it's, it's we're building in order to better understand. And then we want to share the results of our work, really so that people have a different understanding of their built heritage. Whoa! Ah, it's not finished! You see, you haven't done a lot of <rire> Pour en faire oui. plus, euh, il aurait fallu que tu travailles beaucoup plus. Hein. Toute la journée avec moi. Je ne peux pas faire. This is where Aurélie weaves wicker into baskets. The baskets that we use on site are the round handled baskets that you can just see on the floor of the workshop and they're used to transport mortar, lime. The problem is of course that the lime in the mortar is, is co it's corrosive so she's constantly having to remake uh, a stock of baskets but these are of, co of course much lighter, much easier to transport than heavy wooden buckets. Donc, Avec une transmission de notre ancien vanier qui a pris sa retraite. Là, il n'y a pas assez trempé en fait. Dommage. Donc je vais aller les remettre dans l'eau et puis je les, tra je les travaillerai dans, dans une semaine, bon, dans, dans quelques jours. Mmh. Merci. 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 Au revoir. Au revoir. Nous, on l'expérimente tous les jours, c'est pas facile de construire un château. C'est exaltant, mais c'est pas facile. Il faut faire avec les aléas climatiques. Aujourd'hui, il fait bon. C'est agréable d'être dehors. Demain, il va peut-être faire 40 degrés, et après-demain, il va peut-être pleuvoir. C'est pas grave, le chantier, c'est pas ça qui l'arrête. On continue, on, on se plie au rythme des saisons, mais on ne s'arrête jamais totalement non plus. S'il pleut beaucoup, on travaillera moins, mais, mais on travaillera quand même un peu. C'est une immense fierté de pouvoir dire qu'il y a un petit bout du château fort, c'est moi qui l'ai fait. Tous les bâtisseurs qui sont venus ici, ils ont tous un petit bout du château qui, qui leur est cher. C'est parce que c'est eux qui ont fait ce joint, c'est eux qui ont mis ce caillou. C'est eux qui ont installé ce morceau de bois. C'est normal, c'est pour ça que le château il appartient à des milliers de personnes. Des milliers de personnes, de cœur, il y a un petit bout du château qui est à eux, tout simplement.